Number 8. Jake Neat In 2017, while in Spain, the parents of Essex man Jake Neat called local authorities to express concerns over their son's mental well-being. It had reportedly been deteriorating for several weeks after Neat, a paranoid schizophrenia sufferer, in his mid-30s had been taken off an antipsychotic. It took the police three hours and a second call from Neat's parents to reach the man's address in Braintree. Upon their arrival, officers found that Neat had fatally stabbed his girlfriend, 34-year-old Suzanne Brown. During what was later determined to have been a psychotic break, he knifed the woman 173 times. He was later deemed unfit to stand trial and handed an indeterminate hospital order. The delayed police response had reportedly stemmed from the call being wrongly categorized. A review from a domestic abuse board recommended that Essex police have a mental health practitioner be based in the force control room. The authorities reportedly launched efforts to implement the recommendation the following year. Number 7. Nigel Diakite When he was in his late teens in 2019, Nigel Diakite met entire Elliot cleverly and the pair began a relationship. Their daughter was born the following year after they'd moved together to an apartment in Prince Alfred Road, Liverpool, England. By all accounts, they were good parents, but hardship brought on by the pandemic, along with Diakite's wane in mental health, eventually resulted in arguments between them. 18-year-old Diakite was reported to have witnessed a number of traumatic events while fleeing war from his native Ivory Coast and traveling to the UK, allegedly leaving him with undiagnosed PTSD. On January the 29th of 2021, he allegedly suffered a breakdown and launched a brutal attack on Elliot Cleverly, inflicting dozens of injuries with his bare hands. The 20-year-old woman was subsequently heard breathing heavily in the background of a WhatsApp audio message that Diakite had sent a friend, in which he'd asked for money. Diakite then strangled his girlfriend to death with a skipping rope, while their four-month-old daughter slept in a cot beside them. Diakite was arrested and the following month, diagnosed as acutely psychotic and transferred to the Spinney Hospital. It was later determined that he suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and his defense was built on the grounds of diminished responsibility. A jury, however, rejected it and found him guilty of murder, resulting in a life sentence with a minimum of 19 years served. Number 6. Katrina Fell 23-year-old Katrina Fell had been out partying with friends in the small town of Clitheroe, Lancashire, England, on November the 7th of 2019. At around 2 a.m., Fell and her group went to a friend's flat, where they continued to drink and listen to music, but also allegedly consumed an unspecified amount of cocaine. A few hours later, one of Fell's friends woke up on one side of a sofa and saw that Fell had been overtaken by intense panic on the other side. The young woman began crying and didn't provide a reason for her sudden state of distress. The friend managed to temporarily calm her down and Fell left the apartment. She hailed a taxi and was last seen getting into the vehicle outside of Sainsbury's at around 9 a.m. She asked the driver to drop her in the woodlands near her home in the town of Waddington. Roughly 20 minutes later, a dog walker found Fell's unresponsive body hanging from a tree. She was subsequently pronounced dead at the Royal Blackburn Hospital. An inquest found no indication of foul play and determined that the woman had acted while in the midst of a psychotic break triggered by the cocaine. Number 5. Murray Deakin 20-year-old Murray Deakin was living with his grandparents at their property in Beggar, New South Wales, Australia. On June the 1st of 2018, the man started exhibiting aggressive behavior, reportedly triggered by his motorcycle being moved and attacked both his grandparents. Deakin had been struggling with mental illness since childhood, when he would obsessively perform certain actions such as washing his hands, removing and grinding tap fittings, or adding weights to doors to make them close faster. At the age of 18, Deacon told his father that he was hearing voices, but it's unclear if the matter was ever addressed by the family. His June rampage began with him attacking his grandfather, 71-year-old Thomas Winner, with a penknife. Deacon then stabbed his grandmother, Gail, aged 69, while she was unloading groceries from her car. The woman suffered wounds to her chest, back and neck, to which she succumbed later that afternoon. Thomas survived, but sustained further cuts and stabs after fighting Deakin for the blade. The latter then engaged local authorities in two dangerous car chases before his erratic driving caught the attention of retired police officer Michael Horn, aged 54. He followed Deakin to nearby Bornda until the former brought the car to a stop. Horn's wife, Melanie, captured parts of the interaction that ensued on her cell phone. When asked his name by the retired officer, Deakin pulled a claw hammer from his backpack as Melanie helplessly looked on from the car, he struck Horn 
multiple times in the back of the head. The retired officer died a few days later. Following his arrest, Deakin told the police that he believed his grandparents were vampires and that Horn was a demon. He was ultimately found not guilty of the assault and double killing after multiple mental health experts stated that he'd suffered a psychotic break triggered by his schizophrenia. Number 4. Tim Chang Nandap Dr. Jerome Ensick, a senior lecturer in environmental health at the prestigious London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, became a father for the first time in December of 2015. Ensick was outside his Islington home in North London, posting cards that announced the birth of his daughter. He was met by Nigerian student Tim Chang Nandap, aged 23, who at the time was in the grip of psychosis. Nandap stabbed the academic multiple times, inflicting deadly injuries. He was arrested and ultimately convicted of manslaughter due to diminished responsibility and sentenced to an indefinite hospital order. In the aftermath, NSYNC's widow personally funded an inquest to determine why Nandap had been let out of police custody. He'd been arrested in May of that same year after behaving erratically while wielding a kitchen knife on the street where his sister lived. The latter had warned the police that Nandap was suffering from depression, anxiety, paranoia, and hallucinations. Arresting officers had reportedly heard him shouting, they're coming to get me, they're trying to kill me. Nevertheless, Nandap was bailed and the charges for the May incident were ultimately dropped on December the 23rd after the prosecution had deemed the evidence too weak. Less than a week later, Nandap stabbed NSYNC to death. Number 3. Margaret Geitzinger Margaret Geitzinger, a chemistry teacher at the University Preparatory High School in Visalia, California, walked into a classroom with a pair of scissors in hand and declared that it was haircut day in December of 2018. A disturbing video then showed a male student reluctantly taking a seat in front of the classroom. 52-year-old Geitzinger cut off a strand of his hair and tossed it over her shoulder while loudly singing the Star Spangled Banner. In the footage, Geitzinger was shown then grabbing at a female student's hair while raising the scissors in the air and snipping the blades. The student in question escaped unscathed as she and the others ran out of the classroom alerting the school's main office. It wasn't made immediately clear what factors had been behind Geitzinger's breakdown, but her husband described it as uncharacteristic of her, proposing that she'd flipped out due to stress. Geitzinger was arrested and charged with one count of false imprisonment, two counts of cruelty to a child, two counts of battery, and one count of assault. She faced three and a half years in jail and her employment at the school was promptly terminated. Number 2. Zephaniah McLeod On September the 6th of 2020, a man suffering from paranoid schizophrenia went on a stabbing spree in the city centre of Birmingham, England. In what would later be determined had been a breakdown associated with his illness, Zephaniah McLeod carried out five separate attacks over the course of 90 minutes. 23-year-old Jacob Billington from Merseyside was stabbed in the neck while returning to his hotel after a night out with friends. He later passed away while his friend Michael Callahan was partially paralyzed after being knifed by McLeod. Halfway through his stabbing spree, the latter took a taxi home and picked up another blade before returning to the center. Several other people were hurt in McLeod's random attacks, but none were reported as life-threatening. Days before the spree, McLeod, then in his late 20s, had contacted a mental health nurse and told her that he heard distressing voices in his head. The man had a criminal record which included convictions for robbery as well as Class A drugs and knife possession. McLeod was also known to mental health authorities, having told doctors in the past that he heard a voice telling him, kill them, stab them. Leading up to the spree, he'd been consuming alcohol, cannabis and crack cocaine, substances which were believed to have exacerbated his mental unrest. McLeod admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, four counts of attempted murder and three separate offenses of wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. He was sentenced to be held at Ashworth Hospital for as long as necessary and then serve out the remainder of his mandatory 21-year sentence in prison. In the aftermath, a multi-agency review was launched to determine the circumstances that had led to McLeod's spree. Its aim was to answer the same question asked by Billington's sister during his sentencing. How was a man so unstable and in a mental health crisis able to walk the streets unsupervised?
number one, Zoe Sozo Bethel. On February the 10th of 2022, at around midnight, Miss Alabama for America Strong, Zoe Sozo Bethel, plummeted from a third floor balcony at a luxury Miami condo. The 27-year-old suffered devastating injuries in the fall and passed away roughly a week later. A post-mortem examination found that Bethel had had an unknown amount of unknown suspected narcotics in her system. After having dinner with her half-brother, Santiago Roman, they went to his apartment at the seven-story La Piazza Navona building. Roman would later tell the police that during dinner he'd witnessed Bethel take some type of drug, which she claimed would relax her. She subsequently started complaining about feeling unwell and, while Roman was blowing up the air mattress on which she'd been sleeping, she exited the apartment. When the man called her back inside, as indicated by a report from the Miami authorities, the model ran full speed towards a nearby balcony. It's unclear if she hadn't seen the railing and tripped over it, or if she'd meant to jump, impinged upon by the psychological turmoil she was experiencing. An investigation found no evidence of foul play and deemed the death accidental. Kaziah, Bethel's 26-year-old sister told the New York Post that the beauty queen had been trying to remake herself and keep their troubled past secret. When the sisters were younger, their parents, Orlando and Glynis, had been preachers of God-hates rhetoric in line with that of the Westboro Baptist Church. The couple who called themselves the Apostle and the Prophetess actively involved their children in various public manifestations. In 2010, Bethel and Keziah were pictured during a New Orleans protest with the former looking downcast while wearing a t-shirt that read, God hates you sinners. The children were in and out of foster homes, as their parents would sometimes get arrested on charges derived from their public preaching. Keziah suspected that Bethel's breakdown had also been influenced by the mental and emotional toll of trying to shed her past. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have a public meltdown that becomes a viral video or let one of your friends tattoo you while inebriated? Let us know in the comments section below.